Question 5 is coming from connected particles. One end of a light inextensible string is attached to a particle A of mass 3 kilograms. The other end of the string is attached to a particle B of mass 4 kilograms. Particle A is in contact with a rough inclined plane at 30 degrees to the horizontal. Now, since this one is a rough plane, that means there is frictional force. Okay? Mm -hmm. And particle B is in contact with a smooth horizontal plane, so there we don't have frictional force. A second light inextensible string is attached to B. The other end of this second string is attached to a particle C of mass 5 kilograms, which hangs vertically. Both strings are taut and pass over small smooth pulleys that are fixed at the ends of the horizontal plane. The part of the string from A to the pulley is parallel to a line of greatest slope of the inclined plane, and A, B, and C are in the same vertical plane, as shown in the diagram. The system is released from rest. In the subsequent motion, C moves vertically upwards with acceleration 2 meters per second, and neither A nor B reach the pulley, but A find the tensions in each of the strings. Now, what we need to do is to attach the forces that are acting on these particles. So they have told us that C moves upwards, okay? Uh, no, 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 actually downwards. So if C moves downwards, I can actually indicate this. Uh, we have its weight, which is mg, so there we have 5g. Remember, we need to put the forces that are acting on the particle, and then we can be in position to solve the question. I may say, now when I come to this particle here, particle A, um this one has the horizontal component which is mg sine okay i think you know that so this will be 3g then sine of theta which theta is 30 degrees and since c is going down that means uh, in this system a is going to go up okay and then b is going to move this other side to the right okay and it is going to be the same acceleration because it is one system you see that okay now, since this one is going this way, and we see that this one is a rough plane, that means the frictional force is going to act in this opposite direction to the motion, which is mu r. Okay, mu r. And then here we have the vertical component of the weight. Remember, weight is mg. So when you tilt the same angle here, now closing in here is the cosine, and then opening is the sine. So that's why you are seeing sine here. And then here we're going to put cosine. Okay. All right, now here we shall put mg cosine of theta. And then since this particle is in contact with the plane, then we have what we call the normal reaction. Now on top of that, A is connected to this B here. So it's a string. And if the string is stout, that means there is tension in that string here. So let's say that is T1, okay? And it is the same tension actually which acts in this opposite direction here on the pulley the same as this one here okay now here on b also is the same tension that pulls away this b like they are in contact so b can be pulled to this other side or a can be pulled to this other side so tensions must be going away from the particle and then uh, when we look at these ones here there is another tension which is actually here if i say this is t2 then even this one will be t2 remember even here you will have the T2 and then here T2. But we usually don't consider those tensions which are acting on this pulley here. Okay? We don't uh, use them. I can actually take them off here so that we have that. All right. What else do we have? I would have put MG here, but this one is going to be in motion. Now, find the tensions in each of the strings. What are we going to have here? Now, we know that F is equal to MA using Newton's laws of motion. Okay, F is equal to MA. All right. Now, here we have, when we look at particle C, Look at the forces acting on C. So C is going down. 
So we shall have 5G then has to be bigger than the tension, that T2, okay, which is equal to mass is 5. Acceleration was given as 2. So meaning, first of all, this is 50. Then I will subtract you, bring 5 times 2, you will get a 10. Uh, then is equal to T2. So meaning T2 is going to be equal to 40. So T2 is 40 newtons. That is one of the tensions. Okay. Then let's look at the forces that are acting on B. When we look at the forces acting on particle B, I want you to check where B is. Uh -huh. Remember it is going this side, this way. So we have T2 minus T1. Not so? Uh -huh. So we have T2 minus T1. We are still using this formula here. Then it's equal to the mass of that particle B is 4 kilograms. So 4 then times the 2. So we need T1. So T2 is already 40. Then we shall subtract this one here is 8. Then this one will give us T1. So that means T1 is going to be equal to 32 newtons. As simple as that. Part B. Find the coefficient of friction between A and the inclined plane. Now, first of all, when we check back here, the R, because there is no vertical motion, this R is therefore equal to 3G cosine of 30. Okay? So R is equal to 3G cos of 30. Okay, this one I can even go further and then find its value. This is 3 times 10. Cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. 30 divided by 2, you get 15. So this is 15 root of 3. Okay, that is that. That is our R. Now, we also know that F is equal to MA. Okay, and we are looking at particle A. So when you look at particle A, what do we see? It is going up here. So that means this T1 is bigger than these two opposing forces. Okay, so again, using... F is equal to MA, so we shall have T1, then minus MG, sine of that 30, then minus mu R. Then this one will be equal to 3, then times the 2, because acceleration was equal to 2. All right, so what is our T1? I think our T1, we got it as 32. Yes, 32. So I'll put here 32, then minus, this one is 3 times 10, Sine of 30 is a half, minus this is mu, then our R is 15, root of 3, which is equal to 6. Now from here you can see that it is only mu, which is left, that we are looking for. Okay, so this is 32, then minus, what will this one be? 15, then I can say minus 6, then is equal to, when this one crosses, it will be 15, root of 3, then mu. So mu will therefore be equal to 32 minus 15. I think that will be a 17. 17 minus 6, we shall get 11. So we have 11, then divide by 15, root of 3. That is the exact value of mu, but to three significant figures, what will it be? 11 divided by 15, root of 3. So to three significant figures, it is 0 0.423. 0 0.423. That is three significant figures. And that is that. Then here they are saying that when the system has been in motion for 1.5 seconds, the string attached to A breaks. Now, if the string that is attached to A uh, breaks, okay, remember it has been going up, that means uh, the tension in here is going to be zero, okay, because the string is no longer going to be straight, but this one will move, first of all, it has been in motion, so it has moved maybe somewhere, then there is that small distance, it will move under deceleration to come to rest, okay, now, they are saying, find the total distance that A travels up the plane from the instant when the system is released from rest to the instant that A comes to instantaneous rest. Now, first of all, we need to find uh, the speed at which 
that particle is moving with okay hey, when it reaches here let's say after 1.5 seconds what will be the speed here which will be the initial speed for the final what movement here so we need to get that one there now i will say at t which is equal to 1.5 what will be the velocity here using uh, v is equal to u plus 80 remember uh, u as zero because the system was starting from rest then plus the acceleration it was given to us as two then this is 1.5 that means v here is equal to three meters per second so when uh, after 1.5 seconds okay the speed of a or the speed of the system is three meters per second okay now uh, from there we also need to know the distance it has traveled so using s which is equal to ut plus a half a t squared remember it was starting from rest then plus this will be a half times this is two and then t is 1.5 squared of course this one will cancel with that then we shall get 1.5 squared that will be 2.25 that means it has traveled 2.25 meters in this time okay we keep that one there now let's look at the final movement so the final movement here when now the string breaks so when the string when the string breaks okay the tension in that string which we called was it t1 yes t1 t1 is going to go to zero now we, in that final movement we are not going to use the same acceleration because now this one is done under it's like free movement and it is done under deceleration so the particle is coming to rest that's what i showed you here that after 1.5 seconds it is here but then there is that smaller distance it is going to move here so the acceleration here is different it is actually deceleration because the particle is coming to what to rest okay now what does this one mean we need to get the new acceleration and since this particle was going up then we shall say t1 okay again using our f which is equal to ma now the t1 which has now become zero then minus the m g sine 30 then minus the mu r okay minus the mu r then this one is equal to no not zero this one is equal to three then times a so we need to get that acceleration new acceleration so acceleration here is going to be equal to three times ten times a half then minus of course uh mu we got it as 11 uh, we got it as uh, 11 over 15 root 3 11 over 15 root of 3 then our r we had gotten it as we don't need to waste time i think it is up here also it is 15 root 3 so 15 root of 3 okay 15 root of 3 and what does this one give us then after that we shall divide by 3 okay uh, it looks like this one gives us 11 here when this one goes on this it gives us 11 so meaning we shall have and by the way there is a minus here okay there is a minus here so when you check that minus now what do we have here this is negative 15 minus 11 that becomes negative 26 so we have negative 26 out of 3 that is the new acceleration for the final movement now using so we need to get now the distance traveled there so using v squared is equal to u squared plus 2a s the final velocity is zero because the particle is coming to rest okay the particle is coming to rest you see until it comes to instantaneous rest now the initial speed that is the speed we got when it had reached here okay it had moved uh after 1.5 seconds it came here then this is the final movement and we are looking for that distance x here so 
the speed here that is the first one we that is the final velocity we got in moving here which was three remember that okay now when you come back here our u now here is going to be this three so that's why we found it because we need it here now three squared then plus two times the acceleration we have gotten is negative 26 over three and then the distance which we don't know okay now bring this one this other side that is 52 over 3 which is uh, 52 over 3 of x which is equal to 9 so meaning x is going to be equal to when you cross multiply 3 times 9 i think that is 27 then we shall divide by 52 so that distance here then that means that the total distance traveled by a okay total distance traveled is going to be equal to the 2.25 we got then plus the 27 over 52 okay and this one will give us 2.25 plus 27 out of 52 this one gives us 36 over 13 which is uh, 2.27 recurring so whichever you want i can write 36 over 13 meters or i can write my answer to three significant what figures